for all the details. Time to go Ute Racing in race three of the Auto 1 V8 Utes. Paul Morris is alongside me for this one. And Chris Walton and Andrew Fisher on the front row. These brand new Falcon FGs are rocket ships. They've won both races. They seem to be working pretty well. And talking to the guys in the pits, making some changes, that makes sense, uh, which is very good for the, for the new Falcon Ute for sure. Well, your team now being part of Dick Johnson Racing, you're, you're actually a blue oval man. It's got it on your shirt. Yeah, i got the Ford badge on. Gee, I've got to get used to this. <laughs> this grid is a combined result of the weekend so far, and there's a couple of guys down the back. Jack Ellsgood, Cam McConville, and also Chris Pither, the reigning champ, has not finished either of the two races so far. We need to keep an eye on those guys. Yeah, there's some hot rodders down the back, and definitely they'll be pushing their way forward for sure. We'll be on board the NZ in car with Andrew Fisher, who won the first race this weekend. Jack Ellsgood, well, he's sort of down the opposite end. He's starting 23rd in the Extreme Clutches in-car Cooper's Ford. Craig Donis, Thirsty Camel Commodore, and he's lucky to be here. He had yeah, a, was a massive big one. testing crash at Calder last week, and they've got a, a spare car. They've got Grant Johnson's car, well, actually, got, at least. So. It's a good car to get if you're yeah. going to borrow one. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the car that really was up the front last year. Here's how the points are. Ryle Harris, who starts on the second row of the grid. He's done the best job so far this weekend. Chris Walton's right there. Fisher as well. They've changed the point structure a little bit too this year. Ah, Al's good in pit lane, so further problems for this new FG, but they're rewarding winning a little bit more. There's a bit more buffer in the way that the point system works this year, so it won't be quite as tight if someone dominates throughout the course of the eight rounds this year. So it's Fords on the front two rows of the grid. Chris Walton to the left has made a real mark since moving in from Saloon Car Racing. Andrew Fisher, Jesus Falcon. Side by side, two brand new FG Falcons that are going to go into the chicane. Who lifts? Neither of them. Oh, Walton. There we go, motocross style. Off through the curb. <laughs> Not treating the new car with any respect at all. But it's Walton who leads. Fisher, Fisher under the fire, ball. and he tries to block Ryle Harris. Ryle's not going to give that up. Nope. And he'll try and use him up on the exit. Yep. And Fisher hangs tough. Well done. Good hard racing. But that lets Walton skip away. And some of these new FG Falcons were really only finished just before they came to Adelaide. Fisher's car, they tested it in the dark at 8.30 last Sunday night. Kim Jane, Kim new line car. A bit of a bump. Check out the curb use. That's Josh Burden just behind him, who's a Formula 3 driver from Tasmania. He's going to do the next round, which is down at his home track at Simmons Plain. So he's getting his eye in, and he's doing a good job here, but he needs to lift out at Turn 8. That's a good thing to do at Turn 8. Uh, two cars through that corner is not a nice thing to have. Oh, happen. change for the lead. Fisher down the inside of Walton. Shoves him wide up over the curb. It's not done yet, though. He's on the right side for the next one. Good job by Walton there to get the drive off the corner and just square the car up and drive it away. Oh, talk about squaring up. There's a bit going on back in the pack. Grant Bromley in the IC Ford has got some damage. Jeremy Gray trying to work his way through in the SS Falcon. It's on the front. And Ryan sticking his nose in there having another look. And going with them too is Ryan Hansford. He's in another of the FGs. His car's been put together by Rod Dawson, who's also done the, the Chris Walton car. So they've been really busy. Best in the Commodore class at the moment is Nathan Pretty, the monster car. There he is in P5. Let's have a look at this first chicane again. Four off the deck here. Four off. It's, it's Chad Reed style. Look at that. <laughs> Landing was a little better than his most recent one, though. Yeah. Auto One replay shows it all. No danger that the Utes are not going to turn on the show. But so, Fisher, he's the man at the moment. He's starting to clear away. Yeah, and they've also given the, the Commodore Ute a bit of a break in the suspension this year. They've, they've allowed a different uh, shock absorber package, and the guys are saying that's working for them as well. They're now getting some feel and uh, some more feel to the front end of the car. Here's Chris Pither, reigning champ. Ice break coffee Commodore started down the back. He's managed to chip his way through. He's up to 19. But his championship defence has started completely on the back foot. Yeah, and with this uh, this new point structure, it'll probably help him a bit if you get a, if you can get a few more wins and get those get that points back up. So he'll have to go for wins. Yellow flag. There's a reason why. Well, it's not at turn nine. I thought we might see a car facing the wrong direction. Oh, but there's a green one in the distance, so it's cleaned itself up. Auto One wildcard just going through there. That's Warren Luff who's driving that car. It's a, a guest car. We have a different face in it every weekend and. When it comes to Ute racing, he's royalty. Two-time series champ and has been there and done it all in this category. But it just goes to show, you can't just step in and win a race with these guys who drive them week in, week out. 
They're very unique, very unique, unique to drive as a race car and they require a different sort of skill. Not that skill though. No, not that skill. <laughs> but the guys that get the most out of them do a brilliant job. Fisher new faster slap, but he's under the gun. Walton locks the right front. Yeah, that'll be flat spotted. And gets it out in the curb. He just joined the series late last year at Sandown, Paul, and he won a race. He ran at the front, and we all thought, heck, where's this guy been? He's been in saloon car racing, but has fitted in with the Ute boys perfectly. Saloon cars run on a similar sort of tyre, similar sort of horsepower. Not a lot, not a lot different to the Ute, so uh, he's done a fantastic job to adapt and, and run at the front, which is good to see for everyone. Top three, clearing away. Hansford fourth, then it's pretty. Gary Baxter, Reese McNally. Warren Luff, 8th. Cedars, 9th. Kim Jane, 10th. Oh, Josh Burden just tapped the wall. Oh, that was lucky. Won't stop Kim Jane, though. Down the inside. That's for 10th. Now he's left to defend from Ben Cabbage, who he's got another of the UFG Falcons, did four days straight to get this car ready and get it here to Adelaide. There'll be some tired Ute boys, not just from the driving this weekend, just from getting the cars ready. Yeah, yeah definitely. They tend to go out at night and have a good time too. So. <laughs> <laughs> this was the drag race to turn eight between Burden and Kim Jane. And the deal is here, whoever's got their nose in front of the marker takes the corner, but... I think Kim technically probably just about had his nose in front there. Yeah, he did, but... Uh... Oh! A nice flat slide. Back to the front. front. Yep, it is on. Fisher Fish the makes the blue, makes a massive error. So he was the fastest car on the track, had the fastest lap time. He's just locked the rears coming into the corner, gathered it up nicely. And what that does, it doesn't just throw away first and second place. It could also throw away the round win and handball it to Chris Walton. We're on lap four, halfway in this final race of the Auto 1 V8 Utes for the weekend. The Fords are dominating. If the Holden's got anything, we'll find out when we come back to the streets of Adelaide. There's a charge on the streets of Adelaide. It's David Cedars. He's moving his way forward in this number eight Falcon that was hurriedly prepared for this weekend. He took pole earlier on in the weekend, had an electrical drummer in race one. He passed 14 mutes in race two. He started this one from 16th, and he's now climbed his way up to fifth. He's one of the fastest cars on the road, but the Falcons filled the top five spots. The best Commodore is Nathan Pretty. It looks like the whole boys have got a bit of work to do. They do. They'll be screaming for some parity for sure after this one. Walton's about to set the fastest lap of the race with about four to run here. He's fastest in the second second. In fact, there he not goes. just fastest lap of the race, new lap record, a 136.36. He's on target for a race win. He's on target for his first ever round win in the V8 Newton Series, which is quite phenomenal. This is the work he's been putting in. Auto 1 replay. Not afraid to use a little bit of curbing. What a great shot. It is. He can't go back and tell Ron Dawson that he looked after the car, though, no, can he? No, he's up on the wheel, and that's what you've got to do. Just, sometimes you just got to get it done the, however you can. He knows he's got Ryle Harris behind him. And Ryle was, well, he was the dominant guy late last year, wasn't he? He was racking up race wins like you wouldn't believe, but didn't quite get it done in terms of the overall championship. Here's another replay. That's Fonzie Mullen just going through shot there. Former Dunlop Series V8 driver. Oh, but he's not the one having the drama. Troy Donis goes around. Now, Troy's the twin brother of Craig, who's been racing in the series for the last couple of years. They are totally identical. If they swap cars, we'd never know. This is Peter Burnett. Oh, Reese McNally Nelly. lunging on Gary Baxter. But Cedars is coming for them all. He's faster than even Walton. He's about to bang out the new fastest lap of the race. And Reese McNally's about to drop a side skirt somewhere around here. Still hanging on. There's Kim Jane. 27. Ben Cabbage with him. Craig Donis. McConville 
the Bundy Commodore started 26. He's pulled his way through to 13th. Jared McLeod in the fence, turn eight. I think he's kept it off the wall. Stunning yes. job. Oh, not oh, quite. Left front's a bit out of whack. She's got a bit of yeah, wheel alignment it's there. It's done. The McMahon Commodore has had a tough weekend. Jared's first run in the Utes this weekend. It's the former George Elliott car. And, of course, he's the son of former Bathurst winner Peter McLeod. But has ended up with a bit of a disastrous weekend on his debut. Looking here at the fight from the Kiwi, Chris Pither, reigning champ, clawing his way. He's got through half of the field. This is for position 15, starting from 29. It's just a case now of picking them off one by one and each one's worth a point. Try and get some points. Oh, this is McLeod. <laughs> Not often you go through turn eight and have a lose like that and not end up with four wheels hanging off yeah, it. Yeah, it's extremely lucky. Extremely lucky. Ooh, that got everyone's attention. Now, this is Cedars. We talked about him being on a charge. He's caught Ryan Hansford. This is for fourth spot. Of course, the new FGU using... Coyote engine. A lot of the teams are waiting. That was the last bit of the puzzle that they were waiting for to get themselves ready. But a move's coming here. Yeah, the Coyote, a quad cam V8. Modern engine. Compared to the pushrod V8 that's in the in the Commodore. One to go. Walton leading 1.2 seconds back to Ryle Harris. Fisher and then this fight. But here's the lead up. The bumper's flapping, but that doesn't really slow that thing down. One and a half second gap over Ryle, and Ryle seems to have his hands full from, from Andrew Fisher now. And Ryan Hansford here, who last year was the rookie of the year in the Ute series, and did a great job, of course, son of the late great Greg Hansford, Bathurst winner and motorcycle legend. 17 years. This today. Week. Yeah. It is today, would you believe it? 1995 when we lost Greg at Phillip Island, but his young fella here has really stepped it up. He has been a great driver in the Ute series, and he can win races this year, no doubt about it. But Chris Walton, he's going to win a race if he can bring it home for the second half of this lap. But what do the Commodore boys need? Do they need a bigger engine? Do they need more tyres? Do they just need to drive harder? It's, they're not really in the race at the moment. They're not. But the big thing here, the FG, the, the new carpet just looks fantastic over the kerbs. Mm. Lots of compliance. So that, that could be the thing. I don't think it's a motor thing at all. On our way home, back in the race course for the final time. And on the points, the win in the race will give the round win to Chris Walton. What a way. Just his third Ute round ever. He did the last two last year. He turns up at Clipsal and he's handed out a driving lesson to a few of the regulars. It's great to see someone new come into the sport and, and do a fantastic job. He'll take the win. He's got a lap record, a couple of race wins and a round win. What a great weekend. And fantastic for rent car sponsors. Yep, done a great job. Rod Dawson will be wrapped yeah. because he's got another car here coming home in fourth with Ryan Hansford at the helm. Cedars next. That was a great fight back. Nathan Pretty wins, well, the Commodore class. He finishes sixth in the race. Let's recap the order. It's all blue in the top half. It's all red in the bottom half. Warren Luff and Kim Jane round out the 10. The Utes are done. Next up, Porsche Carrera Cup.